there's an exciting new project being built in southwest Ontario, and it is a 250 megawatt utility scale battery project. Now, this is the biggest one in Canada and amongst the biggest in the world, and it's going to be used to soak up some of that surplus uh, wind energy that uh, is produced in, in Ontario. It's financed by the uh, Infrastructure Bank of Canada, and it, the partners are uh, NR Store and Six Nations. So it's got a, an Indigenous community uh, component to it as well. Very exciting. And we're going to be talking to Jason Rio with NR Store. So welcome to the interview, Jason. Pleasure to be here, Markham. Now, why don't we start with an overview of the project, please? Sure. This is uh, a proposed project at this stage. It's a 250 megawatt, 1000 megawatt hour uh, facility. It uh, doesn't use up a lot of land area, um, but it's uh, it's going to be one of the largest battery projects in the world um, uh, when it when it is brought into service and when it is built. It will provide uh, a lot of useful services to the Ontario grid to help us manage um, a lot of surplus energy that we have on our system today. That's clean power that isn't uh, isn't uh, able to be utilized at the best times for everybody in in, in our province. And uh, we'll spend some time maybe during our interview today talking about um, some of those details. Sure. I mean, this is very much analogous to California, where they've got surplus solar that they have to curtail, uh, or it actually gets offered on the market at negative prices uh, sometimes. And it's uh, and they're implementing battery storage in a big way for very much the same reason. So I I take it that's a, a fair comparison. That's a that's a good it's a good analogy. Um, the California market has its own uh, nuances and and uh, idiosyncrasies. Uh, Ontario has its own as well. Um, we have a we have a very clean uh, grid now in Ontario with the retirement of the coal facilities, but we have a lot of gas fire generation that uh, is is uh, is sitting around waiting to start up and ramp up and chase around the renewable energy that's being produced in the province, and it's it's becoming a tougher and tougher job for the for the grid operator, the IESO in Ontario, to to balance supply and demand at every moment in time. And so I think you know this kind of a project at the scale uh, that it's proposed to be at. Um, you know, is an important tool for our, our grid and our system operator to have to be able to balance that clean energy supply with when consumers need to use it and not have to, uh, um, you know, either force export uh, some clean energy on the inner ties to our neighbors um, and, and not get a lot of value for it in that way. And also to use all the existing assets we have in Ontario most efficiently. So don't ask some of the wind facilities to curtail and, and, and not produce power when we have too much. Take that clean energy that can come from those assets that we've that we've built and make best use of it. And so that's it's all about running the grid more efficiently with energy storage and and that will unlock savings for ratepayers. How do we how do we reduce the costs of operating our grid? Well let's talk about the proponents for a moment here, but I'm I'm seeing uh, more and more uh, First Nations uh, communities are getting involved in this kind of uh, in this kind of a project, whether it's on the generation side, now we're seeing it on the storage side. Uh, what led you to partner, or maybe they approached you to partner uh, on this project? Our relationship with uh, Six Nations of the Grand River and a development corporation uh, started back in 2017, effectively. So it's been a multi-year development process working with, uh, with uh, Six Nations Development Corporation from the get-go, from the concept of the project through the development efforts we've done over the last number of years. So it's it's one of the first projects that I'm aware of and it's certainly uh, the most, uh, it's the largest project we've done where we've co-developed the project with um, with an indigenous partner from day one. And uh, we're quite excited about that, um, about that aspect of this project. And it's, um, and it's, and it's gotten to us to where we are today uh, in our development efforts. And um, we're not, uh, we still have more work to do um, on the project in terms of arriving at uh, other other key milestones for the project to be able to launch it but it's been uh, it's been a fantastic development process so far and it's um, I think it's uh, it's a good it's a good approach to doing business what role will the uh, the six nations play in the in the project and in the construction and then in the operation of the project so uh, the Six Nations Development Corporation is a 50-50 partner currently in the project with us. So we're, we're hand in hand developing the project together every step of the way. So we're looking at, we're having all of our meetings together. We're working on um, all the various 
uh, uh, decision making that go through the development stages of a project like this. We're doing that together with them. We will own and, and will be part of the ownership mix of the project together with them uh, through the construction phase and in the long term operations of the project. So that, uh, you know, we're, we're long term partners together and we have long standing benefits that will that will uh, flow to their community. Is there an opportunity for the First Nation communities to uh, generate employment, but also particularly I'm thinking technical training, you know, like electricians and, and engineers and those sorts of jobs? Certainly there is. In fact, um, our partner in this project has been a, a partner in a number of other renewable energy projects, wind and solar products over the years, and they've already established themselves um, a contracting organization called A6N. And this is, a, this is a, an organization that does perform technical services type work in the field. Uh, and the vision for this energy storage, the Oneida Energy Storage Project, is that we will continue to uh, provide uh, contracting opportunities to that organization, which is in fact uh, employs a number of, of, uh, of, of folks from their community. Final question, Jason, and this has to do with like, the lithium ion batteries. Um, readers can go to uh, our YouTube channel a couple of days ago. I interviewed James Frith, who is the uh, Bloomberg NEF's head of energy storage. We talked about battery prices and we're talking just on battery packs. We're talking already now at $137 a kilowatt hour down to 100 by 2023 and down to $58 a kilowatt hour in 2030. That's a huge drop in price. And for developers like you, Jason, I would think that that has got to be, you know, really good news. What that what that lets happen is as the costs decline on storage technology like battery storage and other technologies, um, I would, that makes the business case more um, uh, more positive or more more uh, more of the products meet the break even point for being able to launch these kinds of projects. And so we're at a stage today where battery prices have come down sufficiently. Uh, the supply options from the suppliers that do make these technologies uh, is commercial enough that we can do projects at this scale that can actually meet the needs of the size of the grid that we have here in Ontario. And so um, this will be, uh, I this is the vision to be the lar first large project of its type in Canada, uh, it's certainly in Ontario, and that um, when it is uh, brought, in, brought, on, brought online, it should be able to demonstrate how many other projects are yet to come. So the market for energy storage in Ontario, in our view, is already a couple thousand megawatts of, of, of market size. And this is only a 250 megawatt project meeting uh, only a piece of what we think Ontario needs long-term. Is this technology, is the battery technology in this application economic already, or does it still require some subsidy to make it economic? Uh, doesn't require any subsidy, um, doesn't require any contribution, um, you know, from a grant perspective to make the project economic. Um, it will, it is a, it's a novel project uh, in terms of providing services to the Ontario grid, services that they need today, and uh, at a lower cost than alternatives and lower cost than doing nothing, frankly. So the sooner this project uh, is ultimately approved and brought into service, uh, the sooner we can start generating savings for Ontario ratepayers. Jason, thank you much, very much for the interview. You're welcome.